In this video, you'll learn how to get started using Terraform and AWS. First, I'll show you how to install the Terraform CLI. Second, I'll show you how to install the AWS CLI and configure your user account so that you can interact with your AWS resources. And finally, I'll show you how to set up a simple Terraform project and use it to deploy infrastructure to your AWS account. This will all be on Windows 11. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is head over to the Terraform installation website. You can go to developer.hashicorp.com slash Terraform slash install, and it should bring you to this page here. So you wanna scroll down and go to the Windows section here. And as you can see, there's two different versions. There's 386, which is the 32-bit version, and then there's AMD64, which is the 64-bit version. This just corresponds to the different types of processors and architectures that you may have on your computer. Now, if you're not sure what type of machine that you have, you can very easily figure this out on Windows 11. Just press the Windows key and then type in about and then click on about your PC system settings here. And you can see here under the system type section, you can see that I have a 64-bit operating system and an x64 based processor. If you have 32-bit, that means that you have a 32-bit machine, but I have the 64-bit version. So we're gonna go ahead and click on download under the AMD 64 version here. Um, so clicking on this, this will download it to our downloads directory on our computer, which I will open up here. Uh, so here's the file that we just downloaded. So this is in a zipped version. So the first thing that we need to do here is unzip it. So click on it and then right click and then go to extract all. And then this is gonna pop up asking you what directory that you'd like to extract it to. You can just leave this as default for now, which will put it in the same directory that this file is located in, which is downloads. So we're gonna go ahead and click on extract here. And then you can close this pop-up window here, but I'll just uh, kind of show you what it did. So here's the extracted version and here's the zipped version or the unextracted version. We're gonna double click on the extracted version and we're gonna copy the, the license file and the Terraform application file to our clipboard. So we're just gonna go Control C on our clipboard. So now that's copied over. Now what we need to do is put this file or these files in a more permanent location because the downloads directory is something that folks clean up very often. At least for me, I probably delete everything in here maybe once a week or so. Uh, so if you leave it here, then later on you may find that Terraform stops working because you cleaned out your downloads directory, which is something you don't want to do. So what we're going to do is head over to the C drive of this computer under this PC on the left hand side, click on local disk C. And then I'm gonna create a directory here just by right clicking and going to new and going to folder. And I'm just gonna call this Terraform, enter. And then we're gonna go into this directory and then just paste these files in, okay? So now these are in a permanent home. We're not gonna to touch this from now on. Now what we need to do is add this directory to our path variables so that uh, when we're in terminal or in PowerShell, it knows to look at this directory here, this Terraform directory, uh, so that it makes the Terraform command available to us. And so in order to do that, you wanna press the Windows key again, and you're gonna type in environment and you should see, or environ for me, um, edit the system environment variable. So we wanna click on this, and this will open up this little navigation option menu thing here. Uh, we want to go to this bottom section here, environment variables, click on this guy. And then under the system variables section down here, you wanna find the entry that says path, and then we're going to click on the edit button. And then now here, these are all of the different paths that are currently available on this machine. Uh, so we want to add a new one here. You can either click new and then type in the path specifically if you remembered it. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is click on browse. And then this just allows me to browse to the location that we just created, which was on our C drive. Uh, so we're gonna go to this PC here. We're gonna go to C drive and then click on the Terraform directory that we just created. Click on okay and then okay and then okay, and then okay, four okays. Make sure you click on okay and not cancel because if that happens, then you won't save properly and none of this will work. Uh, we can minimize this now. And what we can do is press the Windows key and type in PowerShell, uh, click on Windows PowerShell here. Make sure you're opening up a new terminal, by the way, if you had a previous instance open already before you uh, updated your path settings, then this will not work. And now you can just type in Terraform and you should see if everything worked correctly that this is now working. And there you go, Terraform is now installed on this machine and you are ready to use it. 
Next, we need to install the AWS CLI. So let's move on to that step. So the first step is to install the CLI and then we're gonna hop into the AWS console to get our access keys so that we can configure the CLI so that we can actually interact with resources in our AWS account. So the first thing you need to do is head over to this website here, which is docs.aws.amazon.com slash CLI slash, there's a, there's a really long string here. I'll leave this down in the description section of the video uh, so that you could just copy this over. You can also just type in on Google, install AWS CLI. It should bring you to this page here. Um, so we're gonna scroll down here and uh, we're gonna install the Windows CLI and just expand this button. This should allow us to download an MSI, which is basically an executable so that we can install it on our machine. Uh, so I'm gonna click on uh, under number one here, download and run the AWS CLI MSI installer for 64-bit Windows. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click on this. You can see it just downloaded a file here, the AWS CLI v2.msi, and we're gonna click on that. We're gonna run and then click on next. Of course, we're gonna read all of this. Uh, it's actually a short TNC, which is nice. Uh, click on next again, install. It may ask us some confirmation stuff here, uh, but you can pretty much ignore this. This may take a moment or so, depending on your computer. Uh, I actually have a really fast computer and this is pretty slow, but that's a separate issue. And waiting, 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 copy. Wow, this is kind of taking a bit here, but please bear with me. All right, finish. So we are good here. Uh, so now what we can do is if we open up our terminal or PowerShell, we should be able to see that the AWS CLI is installed. So I'm going to press Windows key. Uh, we're going to go to PowerShell and click on that. Let me just bring this in view, maybe make this a little bit bigger. Let's clear all this. And we're gonna type AWS and we should see that, there you go, the terminal is now working. If you type dash dash version, I believe, yeah, well, you should see we're on version two. Now, the one thing that you'll notice here is that if you try to actually run a command to interact with your AWS resources, so for example, if I type in AWS Lambda list dash functions and then provide the region, US East one, I'm gonna get a message here that indicates that, you know, this doesn't work, unable to locate credentials, and you can configure your credentials by running AWS configure. And so um, what we need to do is essentially configure our CLI so it's associated with our AWS account, right? So uh, if you just type in AWS configure now, you can see some of the stuff it's asking for, which is an access key ID, a secret access key, a region name, blah, 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 all these things. That, where do we get this, right? This is all a mystery. And so what we need to do is log in to our AWS account and get this information. And so I'm just gonna minimize this for now. Uh, we're gonna come back to this later. So assuming you already have an AWS account, what you need to do is head over into the AWS console and we're gonna go to the IAM or Identity and Access Management portion of the console. Click on IAM here. And we're gonna go to users on the left-hand side here and we're gonna create a new user for ourselves with an access key and then we'll get the secret access key as well. So go to create user and then you can call this whatever user you want. So I'm just gonna call this demo. Uh, and if you'd like to have the ability to log in with this user to the console, um, you can click on this little tab button here. So provide user access to the management console. Uh, and then it's it's asking you some extra details here. We're not gonna necessarily do this in this video, assuming you already have a user that you can log into, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and click on next here. And then if you already have a group, you can select the group here. But we, what we want to do is we want to click on this third option here, attach policies directly. And we need to find the one that says administrator access. You should be able to see it. It's alphabetical. So it should be like the top of this list here. Or you could just type in admin and it should be the one that gets brought up to the top. Um, this permission policy is basically everything. So it gives um, your CLI the ability to, to do everything on your account. So list resources, delete resources, update resources, everything that you would want, uh, which is fine because it's just going to be you, you using it with this uh, account. So we're gonna click on this button here just to select administrator access. We're now going to scroll down and then click on next. And we should have a confirmation page here. You can take a look at this, make sure this is all correct. Go ahead and click on create user now in the bottom right. And then you'll see now this new user is created here. We're gonna go ahead and click on it. And if we go to the security credentials section, we should see the ability to add an access key, which is this section here. Um, so we're going to click on create an access key here. And I'm just gonna show you this 
um, this kind of process and what a sample access key and secret key looks like. You know, you shouldn't share these keys with anyone. Um, if you do, they can basically access your AWS account and create resources and run up a massive bill. Uh, but I'm going to show you this because I'm just going to delete this user afterwards anyway, so it's not going to matter. But make sure you never, ever share the access key or the secret access key for your account. You're in for a whole boatload of trouble if you do. So this is just asking us for our use case. So we're going to click on command line interface interface or CLI tool. And yeah, it's asking us for some recommendations. Um, okay, we're going to click on this guy here, go to next, uh, you can provide a tag if you want. So create access key. And so you can see now here is our access key. And here is our secret access key. And so you click on show and here's the actual value. And so what we need to do now is populate this information into the AWS CLI. So let's go back to our terminal. First, I'm going to click on copy for the access key. I'm going to go back to our terminal. Let's type in We'll clear this out first of all. Let's type in AWS configure once more, AWS configure. And so now it's asking us for the access key. So I'm gonna, uh, on my keyboard, control V. So paste that in and press enter. It's asking us for a secret access key. Let's go back here and copy the secret access key. Go back to our terminal, paste this in. And then it's gonna ask us for default region name. My preferred region is US East one. So US dash East dash one. Um, and if you're, you're not sure what yours is, you can go to the top section here of the console, click on global, and you can see all the different regions that are available. So North, North Virginia is US East one. This is probably the most popular one for the Americas. Uh, but if you're in Europe, then you may wanna click on or type in EU West one, or if you're on the West coast of North America, then US West one. Doesn't doesn't really matter what region you, you pick here. Do keep in mind though that some regions um, don't offer all the AWS services. Like they try to maintain parity, uh, but you know, North Virginia and EU West one uh, in Ireland are a sure bet to have everything that you need. Uh, so we're gonna go back to the terminal here. And so we had in US East one, okay, that's fine. Uh, we're gonna click on that or press enter, default output format. We don't need to, to update anything there. And now we're good to go. So we have our AWS CLI now configured. So let's test this out. Uh, we're just gonna put in a sample command here. So AWS Lambda list functions, list dash functions, and then dash dash region, US East one. We should see an output here because I do have some regions in my AWS account. And there you go. So here's all my regions here. If you just scroll, I guess, down or press enter, you can see kind of all the details of them. Um, so you should be good to go now. Um, if we can, okay, control C to kill that. So your AWS CLI should now be working and ready for you to interact with it. Let's move on to the next step now. All right, so now what we want to do is test everything out. So let's verify that Terraform and the AWS CLI are working correctly, and we can actually issue commands using Terraform to create infrastructure in our AWS account. So open up your code editor here, and I already created a directory for our project, which is this Terraform demo here. Uh, and what we need to do is create a Terraform file and add some commands here to tell it what we want to create in our AWS account. So we're going to create a new file here and just call it main.tf. Uh, and we need to add some just boilerplate here to tell Terraform that we're going to be using AWS here. Um, so we're going to say provider. And then we're going to say in quotes, AWS, and then open curly brackets. And then in here, we're going to say region is equal to, and then in quotes, whatever your preferred region is. So mine is US East dash one or US dash East dash one rather, and then just close that up. And then now what we want to do is create a dummy resource here. So let's say it's an S3 bucket, for example, that you're trying to create. You can always consult the documentation for Terraform to get the exact syntax uh, for whatever resource you're trying to create here. But for an S3 bucket, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to use the resource command and we're going to say AWS in quotes, AWS underscore S3 underscore bucket, and then space. And then in quotes again, give it a name. So my demo, or you may not be able to actually do dashes here. So let's just say camel case, my demo bucket. 
Um, and then we're going to do open curly brackets here. And then we need to provide it the actual bucket name. So we're going to say bucket and then space and then equals. Give it your name of your bucket uh, in quotes. So my uh, dash demo dash bucket dash 999 dash not. like this needs to be unique, by the way. AWS uh, S3 buckets can't have a duplicate name. So if someone has one in another AWS account that's called this thing, then this will fail. So just keep that in mind. Then we need to just say, that the ACL or access control list uh, is going to be private here. Um, so we're going to do that. And then we're going to control S to save. And then now what we need to do is actually run the Terraform command. So we're going to go to our terminal here. Let me just open this up. There we go. Um, so I'm in the directory. That's the same directory that we have the main.tf. Uh, you can just type ls to see the file that you just created here and everything is saved. So you can type in terraform init here just to confirm that everything is good. So it's installing all the details here, installing all the dependencies. Um, so we're good to go here. And now we can just type in terraform apply. And we should see here, uh, do you want to perform these actions? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, it's telling us a warning for this um, value here. ACL is private. Uh, perform the actions described above. Only yes will be accepted to approve. Uh, you can see what it's going to create. So it's going to create an S3 bucket with all these different settings here. This is fine. Uh, we're going to type in yes. And this should create the resource in our AWS account. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna head over to my AWS account and we're gonna to go to the S3 section up here, click on S3, and we should be able to search for our bucket here. I think it was called my first demo. Oh, I have a lot of demos here. Uh, there it is, my demo bucket 999999. You can see it was created right now, so April 21st. Uh, you click on this and it should all be empty, so no files in here. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.